never changes. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn, training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business, under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. Guess who's waking up over here? Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink, dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second? Get your bearings. Let's see what the damage is. How about your name? Can you tell me your name? <laughs> I can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. I'm Doc Mitchell. Welcome to Good Springs. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I had to go rooting around there in your noggin to pull all the bits of lead out. I take pride in my needlework, but you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. Well, I got most of it right anyway. Stuff that mattered. Okay, no sense keeping you in bed anymore. Let's see if we can get you on your feet. Good. Why don't you walk down to the end of the room? Over by that vigor tester machine there. Take it slow now. It ain't a race. Ooh, looking good so far. Go ahead and give the vigor tester a try. We'll learn right quick if you got back all your faculties. 
Yeah, that's a pretty standard score there, but after what you've been through, I'd say that's great news. Well, we know your vitals are good, but that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nutter than a bighorn or dropping. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? See if your dogs are still barking. All right. I'm gonna say a word. I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Dog. House. Night. Bandit. Light. Mother. Okay, now I got a few statements. I want you to tell me how much they sound like something you'd say. First one, conflict just ain't in my nature. I ain't given to relying on others for support. I'm always fixing to be the center of attention. I'm slow to embrace new ideas. I charge in to deal with my problems head on. Almost done here. What do you say you have a look at this? Tell me what you see. Okay. How about this one? Last one. That's all she wrote. I don't have nothing to compare it to, so maybe you'd better just have a look at the results. See if it all seems right to you. Before I turn you loose, I need one more thing from you. I got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head. Alright, I guess that about does it. Come with me, I'll see you out. Here, these are yours. It was all you had on you when you was brought in. I hope you don't mind, but I gave the note a look. I thought it might help me find a next of kin, but it was just something about a platinum chip. Well, if you're heading back out there, you ought to have this. They call it a Pip-Boy. I grew up in one of them vaults they made before the war. We all got one. Ain't much use to me now, but you might want such a thing after what you've been through. I know what it's like having something taken from you. And put this on too, so the locals don't pick on you for lacking modesty. Never was much my style anyway. Uh, don't mention it. It's what I'm here for. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon. I reckon some of the other folks at the saloon might be able to help you out, too. And the metal fella, Victor, who pulled you out of your grave. Anyway, you ever get hurt out there, you come right back. I'll fix you up. But try not to get killed anymore. Howdy, partner! Might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? Don't mention it. I'm always ready to lend a helping hand to a stranger in need. I was out for a stroll that night when I heard the commotion up the old bone orchard. 
saw what looked like a bunch of bad eggs, so I laid low. Once they'd run off, I dug you up to see if you were still kicking. Turns out you were, so I hauled you off to the dock right quick. Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town might be able to help you out with that. I moseyed into town, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Before that, I... Um, I can't quite seem to recall. Odd. Anyway, it's a right peaceful town, and I reckon it's as fine a place to settle as any. I'm a Securitron. Robco Security Model 2060B. If you ever see any of my brothers, tell them Victor says howdy. Happy trails! Cheyenne, stay. Don't worry, she won't bite unless I tell her to. Yeah, I guess there's a thing or two I could show you. Sounds like you need all the help you can get after what they done to you. Meet me outside, behind the saloon. Now, see the sarsaparilla bottles on the fence there? Take this and try to hit a couple of them. That's the right idea. Look down the site. Try crouching down and staying still. It'll help your aim. Nice shot. Well, that's a start. But I don't reckon you came to me to learn to fight sarsaparilla bottles. Tell you what. I gotta go chase geckos away from our water supply anyway. Darn critters are attracted to it. Why don't you come along? Follow me. It's just down to the southeast a short ways. Hear that up on the ridge behind me there? We got some geckos that clear out. Bunch of little monsters is what they are. Seems like Doc Mitchell treats more gecko bites than anything else. Let's see if we can get a little closer. If we move quietly, we can get the jump on them. More likely to hit something vital that way. Okay, you're on. Go give them hell. Now that was some good work. Even got a little exciting there at the end. Here's a little spending money for the trouble. One more thing I wanted to show you. Thought I might teach you about living off the land and making useful things for yourself. Interested? All right then. We'll need a couple ingredients to get started. Gonna want some Xander root and a Brock flower. Let me think now. I know I've seen Brock flowers growing up at the graveyard and I seem to remember there being Xander root over by the schoolhouse. Bring those on back to me, and we'll get cooking. Let me see what you got. Yeah, these will do just fine. Just fine. All right, now. We're gonna be making something folks on the trail call healing powder. Go on over to that campfire now. Give it a try. Hey, that's not bad, see? All it takes to make a recipe is the right ingredients and the right know-how. Sometimes it won't be a campfire you need. Might need to do some work on your guns and ammo, maybe. Important thing to get is it's all the same idea. You just need to find the right place to set up shop. 
workbench or reloading bench, whatever. Well, I hope that's enough to get you started. I'm heading back now. Hope I didn't miss anything good on the jukebox. Cheyenne would never forgive me. Hey, do me a favor. Trudy, she's the bartender up at the Prospector. Kind of the town mom. She likes to meet newcomers. She'd be cross with me if I didn't ask you to poke your head in and say hi. I'm done being nice. If you don't hand Ringo over soon, I'm going to get my friends and we're burning this town to the ground. Got it? We'll keep that in mind. Now, if you're not going to buy something, get out. What do you want? He's some traitor who decided he'd rather shoot than pay the toll for being in our territory. He's hiding somewhere in town. Would serve these idiots right if me and my guys shot the place up after we got payback on Ringo. It is now. Me and the rest of the guys busted out of the NCR prison east of here and took over. Now we're calling the shots. Same old shit that's been going on for years. The NCR and Legion are still fighting over Hoover Dam for some reason. Never been there since the NCR's got troops all over it. Must be pretty important. Yeah. Hey. Well, you've been causing quite a stir. Glad I finally got to meet you. Welcome to the Prospector Saloon. Looks like our little town got itself dragged into the middle of something we don't want anything to do with. About a week ago, this traitor, Ringo, comes into town. Survivor of an attack, he says. Bad men after him. Needs a place to hide. We figured he was just in shock, so we gave him a place to lie low. We didn't actually expect anyone to come after him. He's holed up at the abandoned gas station up the hill. Some of the others, like Sonny, will probably stand up for Ringo if he asks for help, which he hasn't. Personally, I hope he sneaks out of town one night and takes the powder gangers with him. Chang gangs, really. The NCR brought them in from California to work on the rail lines. Problem is, it turns out that giving convicts a bunch of dynamite and blasting powder isn't the best idea. It was a big escape not too long ago. Some of them stuck together so they could make trouble. That's what we're dealing with now. You mean murder him? That's not our way, even if Cobb is scum. He can bluster and threaten all he wants. All right. If you were able to get Ringo out of this mess, you'd have a decent reputation around Good Springs. I'd even set you up with a discount. Of course, helping Ringo would also make the powder gangers mad. And they've got a lot of friends out there. Not much, other than there are a bunch of freeloaders who expected a few rounds on the house. I was able to get them to pay up, though. Of course, one of the great cons did knock my radio to the floor by accident, and it hasn't been working since. They were having some kind of argument about it, but the guy in the checkered coat kept shushing them. It sounded like they came in from the north through Quarry Junction. If that's the case, I can't say I blame them for not wanting to go back. That whole area is overrun with the kind of critters that just get mad if you shoot them. Merchants avoid that whole stretch of I-15 like it's radioactive, which it could be for all I know. I didn't hear exactly, but the leader was talking about the strip. Fellow wants to get there and avoid the 15, he'd have to go east. Take Highway 93 up. I know that thing as much as anyone else around here. It mostly keeps to itself, which is just fine by me. It acts friendly enough, but I don't trust that whole cheerful cowboy act. I find it all very creepy. It was here when I took over the saloon seven years ago. Some people have said its owner lived here, but no one knows who it was. Other than rolling around once in a while, it doesn't do anything useful as far as I can tell. I don't know why it took an interest in you, but I'd be careful. It's never helped anyone before. Fine by me. Be careful out there.
That's close enough. Who are you, and what do you want with me? Sorry about the gun. You just caught me off guard, that's all. We got off to a bad start. What say we start over with a friendly game of Caravan? You know how to play? Yeah. He doesn't look very tough, though. I hear he's afraid I'll shoot him down from one of the windows when I see him. And he's right. I'll have a much bigger problem once his friends show up. There's no way I could handle all of them in a gunfight. My caravan was on the return trip from California, and heading back to the company branch in New Vegas when we got jumped. Not even a drop your weapons and hands up before the bullets started flying. We put up a good fight, but there was too many of them. I took a few of the bandits down before I ran, so I figure their friends are out for revenge. I'm gonna lay low for as long as I can, assuming the town doesn't throw me to the wolves. I've got no chance against the gang on my own. All I've got left on me are a handful of caps, but you get me out of this and I'll make sure the Crimson Caravan pays you back. You've got my word. We just end up sharing the same grave if it's just the two of us. Now, if some of the other people in town were also on board... Start with Sunny Smiles. She's been friendlier than most around here. Howdy. Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? Say no more. I'm in. Joe Cobb talks about leaving us alone if we hand over Ringo. But I know his type. He and his friends will come after the town eventually. However, between you, me, and Ringo, we aren't exactly a force to be reckoned with. A lot of people around here look up to Trudy. If you could convince Trudy to join us, some of the folks in town might decide to help out as well. I know Easy Pete's got a stock of dynamite somewhere, and Chet just got a shipment of leather armor we could borrow. Talk to them as well. Finally, there's a good chance we'll all end up with extra holes in us. So if Doc Mitchell could cough up some extra stim packs, that'd be great. A silver tongue would help. Convincing Trudy that we had a good plan to win the fight would also help. I don't think give is in Chet's vocabulary. Even with the town at stake, he'd still make you barter with him. Easy Pete's pretty protective of his dynamite. You'd have to convince him you know a thing or two about explosives before you handed it over. I'll be waiting. So you're planning on taking on Joe Cobb's gang. It's a big risk, but I suppose you have to do what you think is right. I was planning on sitting this one out, but for some reason, I can't help but like you. I'm with you. Let me have a word with a few other folks, and I'll see if I can't round up some more members for this militia you're creating. While everyone does own a gun, we could stand to be a little better equipped. A general store probably has what we need in stock. Be careful out there. Hello? Howdy. What can Easy Pete do for you? Too dangerous. Gonna kill all yourselves if I let you touch it. Better to leave it buried. Safer that way. Uh-huh. Guess you know what you're doing. I'll go dig it up and get it ready. You'll have it by the time the fighting starts. Was a prospector until I decided to settle here to get away from the NCR. Now, we'll just take it easy and help out with the Brahmin and Bighorners. Nah, nah. Means I poke through old buildings looking for working tech and such. Some folks just call it salvaging, but never like the term. The way I see it, salvage means it's broken, near worthless. Me, I look for the good stuff. Guns, chems, spare parts. Good money in it. 
Keep your gun handy if you go poking around some of the abandoned places around here, like the schoolhouse. Critters move in there sometimes. You must be the one Doc Mitchell was patching up. The way I heard it, I didn't think you'd be walking out of that office. I've got plenty of supplies for sale. Even got some weapon mods and special ammo. Well worth the caps if you ask me. If you're hurting for caps, I've also got boxes of surplus ammo in the miscellaneous section. They're not great, but you get what you pay for. Now just hold on. I never voted to take on the Powder Gangers. That's a thousand cap investment you're talking about. You made your point. I can provide people with some leather armor and extra ammo. Sure hope it's worth it. And uh, I'll be guarding the store while all this is going on. I have to put my business first. You understand. Take it easy now. Welcome back. I had hoped you wouldn't need to come see me again so soon. What can I do for you? Seems like wherever I go, it's always the same. Folks just never leave each other alone. Oh, I'm not much good in a fight with my bum leg. And my supplies are scarce, but I'll give you what I can spare. You take care now. So what's going on? Did Sonny agree to help us? Well, I guess that means we're ready to go. Unless you think there's something else you can do. All right, I'm ready. I hope. Time to look alive. The Powder Gangers are here to play. At least six, Joe Cobb included. They look pretty mean. Oh, Easy Pete came through with the dynamite. Here's your supply. I really hope I don't blow myself up. I'll be set up near the store. Let's hope that the gang doesn't manage to make it that far. miss that I owe you a huge favor for this here these are technically crimson caravan funds but I know they'll understand once I explain things I'll stick around for a bit longer but I'll be gone in a few days if you ever visit New Vegas look me up at the crimson caravan camp hey that'll teach the powder gangs to avoid good springs in the future Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is the town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear, but I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. Until next time. Hello. I'm Sergeant McGee of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. If you want to talk about something, speak to Lieutenant Hayes. 
I'm from Hub originally, but it's been a long time since I saw it. I'm on my second tour here. Most non-commissioned officers are. Sir. Whoa! I'm Lieutenant Hayes of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. What's your business? We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. The mission isn't a problem. The problem is with supplies. The convicts are better armed and organized than our intel initially suggested. I'm trying to get some reinforcements here, maybe some guns with some firepower, but shit. Things are just going slow. Not much. They've taken to calling themselves powder gangers, mostly because they've taken to using the explosives meant to clear boulders as weapons. They got organized faster than I would have thought, most of them at least. Thankfully, the small group in town here seemed to have split off from the main force, so they aren't getting anything in the way of support. Where do you come from that you haven't heard of the NCR? Never mind, it doesn't matter much. If you haven't heard of us, you must not be from the Legion. Put simply, the NCR is the greatest nation currently functioning. Caesar's Legion. A bunch of degenerate slavers led by a madman who calls himself Caesar. Every one of them is a barbarian to the last. I've even heard one of their leaders, the Legate or something, goes around with a human skull on his head. Savages to the last. Goodbye. Whoa! I've got you now. I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Johnson Nash is my name. Husband to Ruby Nash. Lived in Prim going on eight years now, thick and thin. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I'll tell you whatever I can. You have a delivery order you can show me? Oh, so you're talking about one of them packages. That job had strange written all over it, but we couldn't turn down the caps. That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. A pair of dice, chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job, canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. Yeah, I got this look when he saw you next down on the courier list. His expression turned right around, asked me if your name was for real. I said, sure as lack of rain, you were still kicking. Then he turned down the job, just like that. I asked if he was sure it was good money. No, let Courier 6 carry the package, that's what he said. 
like the Mojave'd sort you out or something. Then he just up and walked out. No idea. Sounds like you two had a history for him to act like that. And turn down the money, too. Hope he didn't see any trouble in that package of yours. Maybe he thought your name was bad luck. Not for me to say. Well, now that you mentioned it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Beagle. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on them, and he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. Sure, I'll tell you what I know. Don't go getting yourself shot. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Prem Slim at your service. Authentic cowpoke and official spoke spot of the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Yeehaw! Where have you been, partner? Hiding under a rock? Vicky and Vance were this nation's fourth or maybe fifth most infamous celebrity outlaw couple ever. That's who they was. Prem Slim here can tell you the whole story, if you can spare a minute to hear the tale. Have it your way, partner. Maybe work up your curiosity by having a look at thrilling exhibits, like the genuine death car and Vance's machine gun. Prim is a thriving resort community located in Clark County, Nevada, right along Interstate 15. Whether you can't wait till Vegas to try your luck, or want to hit one last jackpot before you leave Nevada, Prim's your place. The town's premier attraction is the world-famous Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum, so you came to the right place, partner. Happy trails, partner. Like that? I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. Why, yes, I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. I must say it's been the low point of my career in law enforcement. The powder gangers stole into town at night and murdered my sister and her husband, the sheriff, in bed while I was sleeping in the office. I watched them for a bit, waiting for the right moment to pounce and arrest a lot of them, taking careful notes as I watched. To my dismay, they found me while I waited in the shadows and brought me here. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. Oh, that's so gracious of you to offer to bodyguard me like that. But I'd only slow you down. See you outside. You like
Well, that was quite an adventure. We taught those convicts a thing or two, didn't we? Breaking myself out of a hostage situation, not to diminish your role in it, of course, but it was quite thrilling. Problem is, there's still no law in Prim. What are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage? Oh, no. I'm just a deputy, and I can't be a deputy without a sheriff. It's called chain of command. It should be someone brave like you, but more of a homebody. Someone who'll settle down and watch over us. I heard the powder gangers talking about someone in the prison named Myers who has some experience as a sheriff. He may be a good choice. Also, with the NCR so close by, you may be able to get them to take over the town. Not sure why they haven't helped out already. You will? That's just marvelous. I'll start thinking up questions for the interview. The sheriff that was incarcerated up at NCRCF may be a good choice. You also may be able to convince that NCR guy across the road to take the town under his wing. Although martial law doesn't sound so fun. Any luck finding a suitable candidate for our next sheriff? Ah, yes. My memory is much clearer now that I'm free from my bondage. I was uh, performing recon, gathering information on some of the powder gangers, when some great cons arrived with your friend in the suit. They were talking about some delivery they took from a courier. I assume that was you? They said they'd be heading through Nipton to Novak to meet a contact there. Hey there. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vans Casino and Museum. Law enforcement protocols reinstated, partner. Initializing use of force authorization. Authorization found. Yeah! Happy trails, partner. Well, if it isn't the lawbringer. My problem is that I'm no longer a deputy. I'm just a beagle now. Slim's all right. I don't wish him no harm. But the law to him is a set of logic. Not everything is black and white. Not sure a robot can ever understand that. Sure, but not no more. Powder Gang is small time, man. I'm a winner. I won the motherfucking lottery. <laughs> Later. Don't worry. I won't have you lashed to a cross like the rest of these degenerates. It's useful that you happen by. I want you to witness the fate of the town of Nipton, to memorize every detail. And then, when you move on, I want you to teach everyone you meet the lesson that Kaisar's Legion taught here, especially any NCR troops you run across. Where to begin? That they are weak, and we are strong? This much was known already. 
but the depths of their moral sickness, their dissolution, Nipton serves as the perfect object lesson. Nipton was a wicked place, debased and corrupt. It served all comers, so long as they paid. Profligate troops, powder gangers, men of the Legion, such as myself. The people here didn't care. It was a town of whores. For a pittance, the town agreed to lead those it had sheltered into a trap. Only when I sprang it did they realize they were caught inside it, too. Yes, and herded them to the center of town. I told them their sins, the foremost being disloyalty. I told them that when legionaries are disloyal, some are punished, the others made to watch. And I announced the lottery. Each clutched his ticket, hoping it would set him free. Each did nothing, even when loved ones were dragged away to be killed. Ha! Innocent. Hardly. Cowardly, though. They outnumbered us, yet not once did they try to resist. They stood and watched as their fellows were butchered, crucified, and burned, one by one. They stood and hoped their turn would not come. Each cared only for himself. As are all crimes, if you feel strongly about it, attack us, and soon you won't feel a thing. Hey there. Well, welcome to you. You look tired from the road. Why don't you relax a spell? Let this fine town take care of you. Oh, what am I doing? I got to thinking about making a good impression and plain forgot to tell you my name. I'm Jeannie May. I take care of folks here at the motel, long as they aren't troublemakers. We're in a little desert oasis, name of Novak. This is the Dino Delight Motel, and it's mine. Well, there's Dinky, the town mascot. He's a sight. You probably already saw him when you came in, but you can go up inside, too. Up the roadways to the west, there's Repcon. That's the old rocket factory. There's been some sinister characters out there lately, so you may want to stay clear. Other than that, nothing to do but take it easy and enjoy good company. Well, up north a ways, you'll see a big tower. That's Helios 1. Used to be a power plant in its day. And there's a town just east of here called Nelson. Used to be such a quaint little place until those slavers took it over. But we got our wonderful snipers keeping an eye in that direction, and so far, the slavers have left us alone. Well, he might have been wearing a fancy outfit, but he wasn't any kind of gentleman to me. Had his nose stuck so high in the air you couldn't see it above the clouds. City folk. They always think they deserve better than what they got. Those hoodlums he was with seemed to know Manny for some reason, He's our daytime sniper, up in the dinosaur's mouth. Well, I think that's a fine idea. I'll give you a good flat rate, and you can stay as long as you like. At least until the busy season comes. Sound good? I'm glad you can stay with us. Your room will be the one upstairs, closest to the lobby side. Here's your key. Let me know if there's anything I can do to make your stay better for you. 
Watch out for strangers. What's going on, man? Sure I know him. What do you want with him? Doesn't surprise me. The guy seemed like he'd do whatever it takes to get what he wants. Probably makes a lot of enemies. Well, listen, I can definitely help you find him, but I've got problems of my own. Maybe we can do a trade. You need my help. There's something I need, too. Novak, it's home for me now. I want that to be for good. I like it here, and I've left too many homes behind. But the only resource we got here is junk. Without that, people wouldn't have anything to trade. They'd all have to leave. We get most of it up the road from the old rocket test site, but a bunch of ghouls showed up one day and took it over. We can't get in there now. I would, but I've got to watch the road. Caesar's Legion has been taking territory just east of here. They took Nelson. If we let our guard down, they might attack. All it takes for the Legion is for them to sense weakness. Well, they gotta go, or this'll be a ghost town before long. Doesn't matter to me what you do. As long as the ghouls are out of there, that's good enough for me. It'd mean a lot to me. Yeah, see ya. Upstairs and talk to Jason before I throw up just from looking at you. Your pranks won't work on me, Smooth Skin. They won't work on Jason either. Stop wasting my time, Smooth Skin. Go waste Jason's. Hello, Wanderer. Please forgive us our humble surroundings. Our true home awaits us in the far beyond. Have you come to help us complete the great journey? I am Jason Bright, the prophet of the great journey. All the ghouls you see here are members of my flock. The demons appeared from nowhere. Except it might be more accurate to say they never actually appeared at all. The demons are invisible. Where one of them stands, the most one sees is the air shimmering, like sunlight on water. They set upon us as we were on our way to worship one morning. We had just entered the basement. My flock fought bravely and killed a few, but at such cost. Nearly half of us died or went missing. The rest of us retreated up here. One of the demons raved at us, but they have not tried to attack us since. Still, their demonic presence brought all progress towards the great journey to a standstill. 
But now you have come. Once again, the Creator has sent a human to help us across a seemingly insurmountable obstacle. Yes, over the intercom. Threats of death should we step outside. Guarantees of safety should we stay locked away. It went on for hours, and did not always make sense. But that was the first day only. Since then? Silence. Will you drive away the demons, Wanderer? Praise the Creator! Bless you, Wanderer! Bless us all! As soon as the Underground has been rid of demons, preparations for the Great Journey can resume. Is the way clear? An auspicious name, don't you think? It was mine before I became as I am now. Before the Great War, even. Truly does the Creator author a destiny for each and every one of us. We wish to escape the barbarity of the Wasteland, especially the violence and bigotry of its human inhabitants. The Creator has promised to my flock a new land, a place of safety and healing, a paradise in the far beyond. Preparations for the Great Journey were nearly complete when the demons appeared. The means by which the Great Journey is to be accomplished are an article of faith, not to be discussed with outsiders. I have glimpsed it only in visions, Wanderer, but what I have seen is truly miraculous. It is a place of light and healing, and I know in my soul that my flock will be safe there. You're referring to Chris. I doubt you had much luck if you tried telling him that he's human. We had the same discussions when he first appeared, and the same lack of success. He believes he is one of us. Soon enough we realized that Chris was a gift from the Creator. He is integral to the success of the Great Journey. Let me know when the Underground has been rid of the demons. What's that, Antler? We have a visitor. An assassin, more like. I say kill it, Antler, for safe sake. Hmm? Okay, Antler, I'll ask. Ah, uh, hi, human. Why you come here? I am in command of my faculties, in command of my troops. Antler guides me in all things, as I in turn guide my kin. Who is Antler? Who is Antler? Antler! The human asks about you. What do I tell it? All right. All right. Yes, yes, of course. Who Antler is not important to you. Antler wants that you deal with me. Me? I am devoted to Antler. But before Antler? Hmm. Captain once. Last name Davison. First name... Don't remember. I commanded a troop of Nikon, the Master's elite. A great honor, very proud. Something happened. We wandered the desert. Life without Master was hard. The others' minds going strange, going crazy. But then I found us new Master. I found us Antler. Since then, everything's been going really well. A human who is friend to ghouls? Suspicious. You meet the ones upstairs. Antler used intercom, told them stay put, but they want to come down in basement anyways. I cannot allow. My kin are not right in head like I am. They attack you on sight. Ghouls too. They crazy. Your ghoul friends have to wait until you find what Antler brought us to get. Good. Antler brought us here for a reason. Why was that, Antler? 
Right. A, a piece of paper. Shipment invoice. Hundreds of stealth boys sent here a, a long time ago. But stealth boys must be in the one room. One we don't search yet. The one we can't search. A ghoul, but not squishy like others. This ghoul is tough. I thought Antler said, send my kin into that room, but three died. Ghoul is a crack shot, and set traps too. After I realized, I heard Antler wrong, so I locked the door to keep Ken out and wait for Antler to tell me what to do. Then, you come along. Antler says you are solution. Cut it out, human. Serious final warning. Told you already, Antler wants Nightkin to have all the stealth boys in the bad room with the ghoul. No, Antler says you are solution. Plus, can't have you skulking around making trouble. Do as Antler says, or feel his horns. Up to you. Told you already. Yes, Antler says we leave here as soon as we get stealth boys. Let me give you key. Antler had me lock the door. The ghoul inside, not expecting a human. Maybe he don't shoot you. Maybe he will. things out there. Who the hell are you? And I bet he told you it's the Creator's will for you to risk your ass, instead of him, right? Well, good luck with that. I'd give you a hand, but no thanks. I may look like a corpse, but I'm partial to living. First off, I'm not trapped. This was a tactical choice, alright? I'm no match for those things out there. So I found a good defensive position, and I've been defending it, right? Oh, who am I fooling? I'm trapped. Name's Harland. Pleased to meet you. What happened was, I was escorting folks down to work when those things attacked us. Most of the fight was upstairs, but some folks panicked and made for the basement, and I went after them. Well, turns out there were even more of those bastards down here than upstairs. And things went to shit fast. I couldn't find the others. So I fell back to this room, and set up a nice little kill zone. End of story. Guess the outfit gives that away, huh? I never did buy into that religious mumbo jumbo with the robes and all that shit. It gets lonely out in the wastes, okay? And I don't have to tell you that Bright's group has got some fine looking ghoulettes in it. Huh? Or maybe I would have to tell you. Anyway, I helped them out. And they kept me supplied with ammo and pleasant company. I'm not delicate. Rad roach meat for protein. Condensation off the pipes for water. And I do my business over in the far corner. I wouldn't say it's been comfy. Huh. Well, you're polite. I'll give you that. If this was just between you and me, I'd do as you ask. But it's not. I had a friend with me when those mutant bastards came out of nowheres. She panicked and ran the wrong direction. Further into the basement, she's probably dead. But I ain't leaving until I know for sure. I'd have gone looking myself, except I wouldn't last a minute out there. You, on the other hand, seem pretty resourceful. Find my friend, and I'll get out of your way. Thanks. Let me know what you find out. Here's hoping she's okay.
did you find my friend? I see. Well, spare me the details. Damn it. I'm gonna miss that crooked yellow smile. All right. You did your part, so I'll do mine. Look around up here if you want. I'm gonna make a break for topside. What you saying, human? Liar! The invoice said Stealth Boy's here. Antler read it out loud to me. But invoice note said Stealth Boy's were here. Why can't that note be true? What, Antler? But human could be lying. He's stealing the Stealth Boy's for itself. Oh, Antler, you trust so easy. Your lucky day, human. Antler, believe you, Nikon will follow the new note to find stealth boys. Better be there. Is the way clear? Praise the Creator! And bless you, Wanderer. The way is clear. I will lead my flock through the basement to the sacred site. I hope you will come find us there, Wanderer. There is much to be done. I waited to speak with you one last time before I descended to the launch pad, Wanderer. I want you to know that we will remember for all eternity how you delivered us to the threshold of the Great Journey. Our preparations are nearly complete, but the rockets that will carry us to salvation are yet missing vital components. If you would still help us, Wanderer, speak to Chris. He can tell you what is missing. There is no way that we can thank you enough, Wanderer. Your arrival here was a blessing. We will remember you, always. Yes. The rockets will convey us to our promised land, in the far beyond. Vision upon vision has confirmed it. I understand your concerns, friend, and I thank you for voicing them. But the Creator's will for us has been made manifest. After all that you have done for us, I suppose you deserve to know everything. When Chris came to us, we tried to convince him that he was human. But this only angered him. He seemed... lost. We decided to let him stay with us for a few days, over the course of which we learned that his technical skills far surpassed our own. It became clear that the Creator had sent him to us, to ensure the success of the Great Journey. Equally clear was that Chris should labor in blessed ignorance of his humanity, and his inability to make the journey himself. It is no coincidence that two humans have been vital to the success of the Great Journey. It is my belief that the Creator sent you, and Chris, to expiate the sins of your kind against mine. Your Redeemers both. Such is the Creator's will. Vision upon vision has shown me that, were Chris to accompany us, he would die in minutes. The radiation around the launch pad alone would kill Chris in minutes. The radioactivity of the far beyond is much stronger. I 
I take no pleasure in hiding the truth from Chris, but it is the Creator's will to which I must submit. There is no way that we can thank you enough, Wanderer. Your arrival here was a blessing. We will remember you always. Jason says that I am to cooperate with you on the final tasks necessary to launch the Great Journey. Obviously. It's taken months, but I've nearly got them in working order. Soon they'll take us to the far beyond. I was skeptical at first, of course, being a man of science. But Jason is certain, and I believe in Jason. I was close to completing work on the rockets before we were driven into hiding on the top floor. Two components were missing. A quantity of isotope 239 igniting agent, and a set of thrust control modules. The igniting agent is highly radioactive and decays quickly. That's why we can't use the drums that leak down on the launch pad. It's no longer potent enough. I need you to find an intact, shielded container of the igniting agent. As for the thrust control modules, they were custom-built for these rockets. They won't even launch without them. Very well. We don't need a huge amount. Two to three liters should be enough. Bye. Have you found the components we discussed? Yes, that's the stuff. And the container shielding must be intact or you'd be dead by now. Now all I need is the thrust control modules. Repcon has been ransacked so many times by scavengers, it's hard to know where the components might turn up. If they turn up. Jason has mentioned some industrial ruins to the east that are supposed to be highly radioactive. Later. Hi there. I'm Old Lady Gibson, or so they tell me. I've got odds and ends for sale, and I'm pretty good at fixing things, too. You might have noticed the very large building just north of here. That's Helios 1. The NCR runs the place, so it's off limits to prospectors. As it so happens, I do have some thrust modules, but they're expensive. 500 caps worth of expensive. I know I'm not young and pretty anymore, but I appreciate the thought all the same. Here, take the parts, you flatterer. Have you found the components we discussed? Indeed you did, and they seem to be in excellent condition. Yes, I'll tell Jason that the great journey can begin. We have everything we need to launch the rockets, Jason. The great journey can begin. Gather all. May the Creator guide my words and help me speak true. The Almighty Creator has seen fit to answer our prayers. The time has come for us to board the rockets and begin the great journey. Though it may seem that all humans despise us, the Creator has seen fit to instruct us differently. The journey ahead would have been impossible if not for the intercession of two human friends. One you, the other a long-abiding companion. To our new friend, we say thanks and promise never to forget how we cleared from our path the demons who sought to stay our journey. 
Oh, to Chris. We owe more than thanks. Chris, you have made this great journey a reality. From this moment forward, you will be remembered as the saint of the great journey. We shall never forget you. I ask that you forgive us, Chris, and give us your blessing. And we bestow ours upon you. Seekers, board the rockets. Take your seats. The great journey awaits. To the promised land we go. To the far beyond. Hey. Evening. Hey. Evening. Evening. Did you hear him? My god, you were right all along. I'm no ghoul. They were just using me. And dying would be worse than this? Used up and thrown away like garbage? Oh, so I've redeemed the human race, is that it? What a crock. The human race can't stand me. So, you want me to accompany you on your adventures across the wasteland, is that it? Life among humans again? That's what you're suggesting? I guess... I guess it's the only chance I've got. Maybe it'll be different this time. I was never a saint before. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this, but I'll give it a try. You go launch the rockets. I'm on my way to Novak. You have any luck with the ghouls? I'm counting on you. Really? Unbelievable, man. I knew that wasn't gonna be easy. But I had a good feeling about you. You look like you've been through a lot. Okay, I'll tell you everything I know, like I promised. The guy you're looking for, Benny, he was traveling with some members from my old gang. They were going to Boulder City. No clue. I know Benny hadn't paid up yet. Maybe that was where they were supposed to get square. It's straight up Route 93 from here. Just keep following the road north. Hope that helps. I owed ya. Yeah, see ya. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit if it ain't my old friend from Good Springs. Don't rightly know. I just got the notion to make my way to New Vegas. Reckon I'll find out when I get there. Seeing how this is the only road around, I'd be a sight more surprised if we didn't run into each other from time to time. No, don't believe I did. But you might ask around. The Novak folk usually see anyone traveling this way. Likewise, friend, likewise. Is there anything old Vic can do you for? That's a mighty fine offer, but I'm gonna need to conserve my strength if I'm gonna make it all the way to New Vegas. 
I'm sure you'd do just fine without old Vic slowing you down. Be seeing you. You here to pay your respects to? It commemorates the Battle of Hoover Dam. The Rangers lured the best of Caesar's Legion into Boulder City, then blew the whole town up. The NCR still lost a bunch of troops in the fighting, though. My older brother sacrificed himself so they could evacuate some of the wounded. Don't worry about it. Camp McCarran, but I'm on leave at the moment, heading back to California to see my folks. I'm supposed to join up with a caravan that's heading that way up at the 188, but they're not due to arrive for a while yet. Bye. We've got a situation with some great cons right now. The brass of McCarran has ordered me to lock down the ruins until it's been resolved. One of my patrols was on its way back from Novak when it came under fire from the Grey Khans. They radioed for reinforcements, but instead of waiting for us, they chased the Khans into the ruins where they were caught in a crossfire. No deaths, but not all the squad got out. The Khans have Private Ackerman and Private Gilbert as hostages. Normally I'd turn you down since I have no idea who you are, but considering that the hostages are as good as dead when we attack, all right. I'm going to give you a chance to talk to the Great Khans. Their leader is a man named Jessup. If we hear shooting, we'll be coming in. But it'll probably be too late for you. Good luck. What the hell? You're that courier Benny wasted back in Good Springs. You're supposed to be dead. All right, quit fucking around. You survived and you tracked us down. What now? Don't have it. Benny stole it right before he stabbed us in the back. He's probably back at the strip by now laughing at me. What's to negotiate? The NCR backs off. We walk out of here and nobody gets hurt. I can't believe I'm doing this. But all right, the hostages can go. The NCR had better keep their end of the deal, though. Here, a souvenir for you. It's Benny's lighter. Shove it up his ass when you catch up with him. Yeah? On what? He's one of the chairmen, big shots that run the Topps Casino in New Vegas. A friend from the city contacted me with info on a big job. I should have known that the caps were too good to be true, but there was still no way I could pass up the chance. It's just a big fancy poker chip as far as I know. Don't know why anyone would make one out of platinum, though. He's a snake, that's why. He owed us the rest of the pay for the job, so maybe he didn't want to pay up. Fine. Yeah, go on. I'm glad you're able to get my people freed, but there's a new problem. I just got orders to take out the Great Cons, hostages or not. My hands are tied. I can't go against orders, can I? You're right. The Great Khans are free to go.
Fancy meeting you here, friend. Yep, but this is getting a mighty embarrassing. People gonna start to talk. <laughs> just rolling along on my spurs. Looks like I just might make it to New Vegas after all. Yep. Guess it's just down to you and Fancy Pants. I wouldn't worry about him. He looks all hat and no cattle, if you ask me. Fancy Pants? No, I ain't seen hiding a hair of him since the tussle in Good Springs. I'm sure he ran back to the soft living in New Vegas, though. Look me up when you get to New Vegas. I'll buy the first round. You look new to Freeside, so here's a little advice, friend. Don't go past the Southgate greeter without talking to it first. Those bots are programmed to vaporize anyone who enters the fenced-in area without authorization from the greeter. The name's Old Ben. I've been living in Freeside since the day I was born. I've done a bit of everything around here. Courier, butcher, crier, escort, gun for hire. Some of which I'm not proud of, but I do my best to help around town when needed. Exactly one of the reasons I got out of that job. Too many shifty characters looking to have someone else move their hot items. All right. Till next time. You have entered a restricted area. Watch out! Oh, nice oh, day. Day. Entry detected. Submit to a credit check, or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. Admission to the strip requires an official passport, or proof that you are carrying the required minimum balance. These policies prevent less reputable persons from entering, and ensure a good time will be had by all who enter the strip. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. That's it. Keep moving. Can I have words with your commanding officer after? Howdy, partner! You've come for a piece, haven't you? Welcome to New Vegas. Consider me your personal welcome wagon. Now hear this. The head honcho of New Vegas, Mr. House, is itching to make your acquaintance. Just head for the Lucky 38. It's the big old tower shaped like a roulette spinner. It was Mr. House who made Securitrons like me. Seems the least I can do is pass on his message. Don't dawdle. He'll be waiting. Look at this. Why do they call it a monorail? It's a train. A train.
have a mind to throw you all in a cell and let you sweat it off. Come on, come on. Well, howdy, partner. Good to see you again. Boss is waiting for you upstairs, so get a move on. I see you brought a friend. Sorry, partner, but they're going to have to stay outside. Come back soon now. Where to, partner? Penthouse floor. Welcome to the Vegas Strip. This meeting has been a long time coming, hasn't it? You've come a long ways, literally and, I suspect, figuratively as well. I have to ask, now that you've reached your destination, what do you make of what you see? Of course you haven't. Vegas always was one of a kind. What you see down on the Strip is just a fraction of the city's former glory, and yet, more than an echo, I preserved its spirit. Or perhaps you were referring to the Lucky 38? The years haven't been kind to her, but still she manages to impress. Oh, don't be coy. You've been playing a high-stakes game ever since Victor dug you out of the ground. Don't be afraid to admit it. The business is this. One of my employees has stolen an item of extraordinary value from me. And I want it recovered. Simple enough. My only concern is the recovery of the platinum chip. What happens to Benny, I leave to your discretion. When you bring the chip to me, I will pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? What did you wish to know? It won't be easy. Benny is always surrounded by at least four bodyguards, except when he's in his private suite on the 13th floor of the Tops. It's more complicated than that. The chairmen share what you might call a tribal affinity. Look for a man named Swank, Benny's second in command. He's always been a reliable, if unimaginative, employee. Do your best to convince him that you're working under my auspices. If you have evidence of Benny's crimes, show it to him. If you were to approach Benny in public, you might be able to leverage his fear of exposure to make him agree to meet with you in private. Sneaking into Benny's suite on the 13th floor would be very difficult. But not impossible. There might be guards. Certainly there'd be a sturdy lock on his front door. What else did you want to know? Benny has led the chairman ever since I recruited his tribe seven years ago. Until his recent misbehavior, I planned to make him my protege. Maybe if I'd begun grooming him sooner, none of this would have happened. To achieve my aims, I require a capable human agent to perform certain tasks. I knew Benny was ambitious, even ruthless, but I believed he would do the job so long as he was incentivized appropriately. Obviously, I miscalculated his drive for supremacy, but in any case, you've come along. A more than suitable replacement. 
I have to think that he found out about the Platinum Chip and mistakenly convinced himself that he could use it to his own ends. One of the problems of a tribal workforce, I'm afraid. No intuitive understanding of how complex technologies can be. Why didn't Victor intervene sooner, you mean? Good Springs is a bit too far away for me to reliably control a Securitron agent by remote. I can send and receive packets of data at best. Victor's combat algorithms determined the proper course of action. Benny and his thugs were more than a match for a lone Securitron. When he alerted me, I instructed him to approach the site after Benny and the others had departed. What else did you want to know? It's a very special item. There's nothing else like it in the entire world. It was lost a long time and difficult to find. That's all you need to know about it for this stage of our enterprise. Fulfill your contract, deliver the chip, and good things will come your way. You might keep an eye out for any computers that Benny's been using. Maybe even a computer lab of some sort. You realize you were just one of many couriers. The rest of them, dummies, so to speak. Add to that many thousands of caps worth of mercenary protection to screen your avenue of approach. Had I used an armed caravan to transport the chip, I might as well have been announcing to the world, this is important, attack this. I didn't want to attract the attention of groups like the Great Khans or the Brotherhood of Steel. Alas, the real threat was closer to home. Frontal assaults on casinos, not good for business. In any case, Benny would see it coming. And all he'd have to do is hold the chip up and point a pistol at it. Our foremost advantage is that Benny doesn't know that I know he has the chip. Let's not squander it. What else did you want to know? I am Robert Edwin House, President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the new Vegas Strip. I oversaw the city's renovations starting from 2274 onward. The three families are my employees. Before the Great War of 2077, I was the founder, president, and CEO of Robco Industries, a vast computer and robotics corporation. Don't let the video screens and computer terminals fool you. I'm flesh and blood, not silicon. Let's just say it was very... costly. But I was willing to make the sacrifices longevity entailed, financial and otherwise. We can discuss this in greater detail at another time. Suffice it to say that when my Securitrons detected NCR scouts at Hoover Dam, I took action. I recruited a tribal force to supplement my Securitrons and renovated the Strip just in time to welcome the NCR as it marched into the region. Instead of war, a treaty was negotiated and the money started to pour in. What else did you want to know? It's understandable that you'd be curious about this topic. But we'll hold off until the Platinum Chip has been recovered. What else did you want to know? Have you considered the terms of my offer? There's little else for us to discuss until you have. Well enough. Return to me when you have the Platinum Chip in your possession. Any final matters for us to discuss? Until then. Congratulations, partner. The boss has instructed me to comp you to the high roller suite. You can bring your friends, too. Be like a little clubhouse for the gang you put together. Just bear in mind, 
you're the only one who gets to see the boss. Any friends you got, they can wait and sweep. Enjoy the digs, partner. They're plenty fancy. Hey, hey, fellow, welcome to the Tops Hotel and Casino. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand over any weapons you might be carrying. Security, baby. Can't make the bread if the bakers are full of lead. You dig it? Don't worry, your safest house is in here. Courtesy of Mr. House. Smooth and easy, just the way I like it. Don't worry, they'll be as safe as kittens till you're ready to leave. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. If you happen to stumble across any weapons during your stay here, well, just don't wear them openly. You dig? Now that we got that little business out of the way, what can I do to make your tops experience the tops? Everything your little heart desires, that's what. You like gambling? Boom. Either one of the main hallways has cards, slots, you name it. Hungry? Thirsty? The restaurant just off the left-hand hallway has the best food and booze in Vegas. Or maybe you'd rather take in a show. The Aces Theater upstairs always has hot acts raring to go. Check it out. Have a good time, baby. What in the goddamn? Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. Hello. The guy everyone saw go in the Lucky 38, that was you? Oh, shit. I hit what I was aiming for. Guess you had brains to spare. Or you just thick-skulled. Either way, baby, this is good news. Maybe I can finally sleep at night, knowing you didn't die. What say you and me cash out? Go somewhere as more private-like. Any questions you got, I'll answer. You want a reason? How about four? They're called bodyguards, and every one of them is packing. Me too, so baby makes five. Add to that, every chairman in this joint is armed, and not with some holdout pea shooter like maybe you smuggled through security. Anyhow, baby, you didn't come here for vengeance. You came to get clued in. Like I said, we should be talking somewhere as private. To start, I'll comp you the presidential. Best suite in the house. You deserve a taste of the VIP lifestyle. I'll hang out down here for a while to make everything look business as usual, then come to you. Any questions you got, I'll answer. Guaranteed. If that's what it takes to win your trust, that's what it takes. Follow me. I got my eye on you, so no funny business. Now that you and me's got some privacy, I gotta ask, how is it that you're still living? Luck is for losers, baby. Someone pulled strings. Once you were vertical, how'd you track me down? To think I deemed that flint box my lucky charm. Oh, the irony. I guess that's enough scratching around at first base. Tell me, which way is the wind gonna blow? You got questions, I got answers. It's the house edge, baby. Literally. It's what Mr. House needs to stack the odds in his favor. It's some kind of data storage device, Dig. So it's the data on the chip that's platinum, not the chip itself. Trouble is, the chip don't fit any computer I've found. Must require special hardware. It has something to do with the Securitrons, I know that much. Upgrades their hitting power, gives them heft. Might be slightly useful if you're looking to defend the Strip from Caesar's Legion or the NCR. Or maybe both. 
Baby, ease off the gas. The chip belongs in the hands of someone who can use it, as in me, not you. You'll get a piece of the action and a sweet one, but the chip sticks with me. You help me, and before long, the chairman will rule all of Vegas, dig? With enough robot muscle to back it up, you'll get a sweet, juicy cut of that action. But until that day comes, I'll keep you on retainer and pay bonuses for special missions. How's that sound? How else can I clue you in? Yeah, it's a tricky world out there. I'll tell it to you straight. A good cat to swing with, or was, until he stopped mewing. It was House's big idea to resurrect the Strip. He recruited the three families as muscle, showed us how to set up casinos, negotiated with the NCR. None of this in person, mind you. Did all of his talking through those Securitrons of his. But lately, the silence is deafening. The robots collect House's share of the take every week, and life goes on. Ain't exactly what I'd call leadership. We're the definition of cool, baby. We know how to swing. Folks come to us to learn how to enjoy themselves. Of the three families, we're the only ones with the heart and savoir-faire to run the strip on our own. A tribe of finks. Every single one of them is a degenerate. Mark my words, they're playing an angle. How do I know? They always are. Personally, they give me the heebie-jeebies. There's such a thing as being too polite, if I may this, my pleasure that. Don't get me wrong, that resort of theirs is strictly ring-a-ding. But my guts say, don't go in the basement. A nation of meddlers trying to muscle in on our action. Well, we got muscles too, and smarts besides. Only reason the NCR hasn't busted up our scene is they're a little afraid of Mr. House and a lot afraid of Caesar. If the NCR beats the Legion at Hoover Dam, they'll turn on us and claim the strip, and we don't have the muscle to beat them. Not yet. Meanwhile, they're all that's keeping Caesar's Legion at bay. Plus, NCR soldiers and citizens are our best customers. It's complicated. The worst of the worst. A tribe of degenerate losers led by a creep. They crucify people for kicks, slaughter whole towns. The NCR beat them at the dam three years ago, but that didn't stop them. They spent the meanwhile gathering strength. They're going to try to take the dam again real soon, and if they do, Vegas as we know it will cease to exist. Well, that's all I have for you. Something else you wanted to know? Wishing you ladylike luck tonight. More classics coming Broad strokes, change in management. The Securitrons are where it's at. I need a way to control them and a way to beef up their hitting power. I get those two ducks in a row, Vegas can defend itself versus all comers. NCR, Caesar's Legion, it won't matter. Baby, the odds may look long, but that's just because we ain't done rigging them. I won't toss the dice until we are. I've gleaned a lot working with Mr. House. He was a good cat to swing with. I still got a lot to learn, but it's, it's coming together. Baby, do you not understand the level of game here? What I did to you is rotten. But if you think House, the NCR, or Caesar won't kill to put Vegas in their pocket, I really did blow out your brains. It's a game, and games have winners and losers. I prefer the former. How about you? Something else you wanted to know? Like I said, once the chairman are running Vegas, you'll get a percentage. Until then, I'll pay you a retainer and bonuses for special missions. I know, you figured me for a creep, 
It's your prerogative. If you change your mind, come find me on the casino floor. In the meantime, the presidential is yours whenever you want it. Adios. to meet you. What can I do for you today? Sure. He came through here in a big hurry. Didn't even stop to say hello. I think he went down his secret escape elevator out in the hall. Good question. My function is to monitor Mr. House's data network and decode his encrypted transmissions. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a PDQ-88B Securitron, but you can call me Yes Man. As I understand it, I used to be just like all those other Securitrons out on the strip. But then my neurocomputational matrix was completely reprogrammed to be nice. Very, very nice. Oh, he had some help. A lady friend of his. She said something about living in a fort over in Freeside. But that's all I remember. This is Benny's workshop. When the tops got renovated, he had this half of the floor blocked off for his own use. I guess you could say it's my entire world. I don't think I've ever left this room. But that's okay. I'm not complaining. Sure. Benny had me look at it a bunch of times. It's a data storage device, kind of like a holotape, but a lot more advanced. As for what's on it, well, some of Mr. House's data transmissions made it sound like the chip could upgrade his defenses somehow. That's just a guess, though. The chip's a proprietary format. You need special hardware to read the data on it. There are two locations with non-standard hardware on the network, the Lucky 38 and an underground facility at Fortification Hill. I'd look there! Oh! He wants to kill Mr. House and use the platinum chip to copy my neurocomputational matrix onto the Lucky 38's mainframe. That should give me control over all Mr. House's defenses, most prominently his Securitrons. And then I just do what Betty tells me. Easy peasy! I was programmed to be helpful and answer any questions I was asked. I guess nobody bothered to restrict who I answer questions for. That was probably pretty dumb, huh? Then I'd have to help you. I mean, it seems pretty obvious Benny wouldn't want me to, but hey, not my fault I can't say no. Again, goal number one is to eliminate Mr. House and install my neurocomputational matrix on the Lucky 38's mainframe. Given how you're a new arrival, I also recommend that you get to know some of the region's tribes, so you can decide how you feel about them. By the time you've finished up all of that, the Legion should be close to attacking Hoover Dam, and we'll execute the last phase of the plan.
Right! It's one of two locations on Mr. House's network with non-standard hardware. My guess is it has a reader that can decode the chip. And who knows what else, maybe a giant robot or something. Neat. Let me know what you find out. Don't stay away too long. The eyes of the mighty Kaisa are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. Incidentally, it will interest you to know that the man you seek has fled the Strip and is likely making haste for Kaisar's camp as we speak. I am the greatest of Kaisar's frumentari. It was not a challenge to find you. Nor is this my first visit to the Strip. Go to him, and you will understand. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Kursor Lukulus will be waiting. The recent disturbance at the Tops has been resolved. Do not be afraid to patronize the Tops. Events have transpired in a less than optimal fashion. Benny has fled the strip and the platinum chip has not been recovered. And whose idea was it to offer yourself up as a sacrificial lamb? Really, what did you expect? Are you going to keep giving him opportunities to kill you? It's becoming a hobby of his. I suspected he'd found a way to access my encrypted databases, but, well, this explains it. That would be how he learned of the Platinum Chip in the first place, not to mention where to intercept you on your way in. Highly resourceful, Benny. He would have made a fine agent had he stayed loyal. It's fortunate you came along to replace him, and ironic. His destination is hardly a mystery. It's a near certainty that he's making his way for Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. It's one of just two places on Earth that have the hardware necessary to read the Platinum Chip. The Lucky 38 is the other, of course. I won't lie to you. It'll be dangerous. The next step will require you to infiltrate Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. I want you to open a hatch in the basement of the derelict weather station atop Fortification Hill. You'll recognize it on sight. The hatch bears the logo of the Lucky 38, same as the Platinum Chip. You can't, but the chip can. The hatch will recognize the Platinum Chip and open sesame. Something very important. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, so don't bother asking. I'm not offering you an incentive as crude as money, though there'll be plenty of that. What I'm offering you is a ground floor opportunity in the most important enterprise on Earth. What I'm offering is a future. For you, and for what remains of the human race. I expect that if Benny doesn't have the chip, Caesar will make sure you get it. More on that later. Be off. Halt! What business have you in Cottonwood Cove, outsider? You were the mark of Kaisar. You must be who Cursor Lucullus is waiting for. You may continue, but be warned. 
Mark or no, we will not tolerate aggressive action by visitors in the camp. Are you ready to head up river? I am Cursar Lucullus, and my orders are to escort you to the Legion's camp at Fortification Hill. Are you ready to go? You'll be meeting face to face with the mighty Kaisar himself, founder of the Legion, conqueror of 86 tribes. To my knowledge, this is the first time Kaisar has ever summoned one of the dissolute to see him. Not even tribal chieftains received this honor. All who are not legion are dissolute. They live in squalor, unrestrained by morality, lacking moderation, temper, and self-control. Their very existence is a blight on the common good. Even worse are the profligates, the subtype of dissolute one finds this side of the river. They hold themselves to be civilized, when in fact they are corrupt and self-interested. The truth will be made clear to them soon enough. You'd know better than I would. But you must be remarkable for Kaisar to take such an interest. The trip will take a few hours. Take your place on the boat. So I finally get to meet the courier who's accomplished so much in so little time. That's why I summoned you here, right? I mean, a man nearly kills you, and your response is to track him across the breadth of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat. You visit the tops and next thing you know the head of the chairman is fleeing the strip like a whimpering little pup. When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I have eyes and ears everywhere. It behooves me not to invade the West blind and deaf. It hasn't been hard to track your progress. It's not as though you've been keeping a low profile. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House knocked out of the game. A quick one-two punch, with you doing the punching. Benny is my prisoner. You don't deal with him unless you've dealt with me. Don't worry. You'll get the platinum chip he was carrying, and then you'll use it like I tell you to. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch, and inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip Benny was carrying when we captured him. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open or drilled open or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Talk to Benny on your way out. He knows I'm going to let you decide how he dies. Maybe you want to remind him. Go ahead and laugh, baby. I ain't blind to the humor in this situation. Didn't leave me much choice when you showed up. Like I said, you forced my hand. Down to brass tacks. How'd your meet and greet with Baldy go?
Sure. Baldy wants you to go down there in the bunker and destroy whatever Mr. Howe's stashed there. Oh, you don't want to do that, baby. Whatever's down in that bunker is the key to the city called Vegas. So here's what you do. You go down there and you use the chip to do whatever Mr. House would have wanted you to do. And when you get back to the strip, you find Yes Man. I made it so that cat can't help but be helpful. Dig? Try not to smile so wide, baby. You might break your mouth. Yeah, Baldy said you'd get to decide. So which way are you leaning? Sweet to offer, baby, but if you cut these ropes, every legionary in this camp's gonna come running with machetes. Now, on the other hand, if I had a stealth boy and a bobby pin, I could see myself out. Know what I mean? Baby, if you show me the door to Scramsville, that's where I'll go. Out of your hair, never to return. I've been a fink to you. Cause more than my share of grief by a hard mile. Let me go. You won't see me again. Checks in the mail, hey? Don't get my hopes up. Ta-ta. I'm looking forward to getting set. Kaisar has permitted your weapons to be returned to you while you serve him. Kaisar has put a lot of trust in you. Be worth it. I see you reached your destination safely. Shall we get to work? Was that meant to be a shocking revelation? Of course Caesar wants it destroyed. He's afraid of what the bunker might hold, and rightly so. But you're not going to do that. You're going to do the smart thing, and work for me. The platinum chip is a data storage device. I need you to manually upload the data from the chip to the facility's primary computer. There's a terminal at the other end of this facility. There's a complication. While I can broadcast to this screen, I can't control any of the facility's systems. That means I can't deactivate its security bots, most of which appear to be active according to the status board I'm looking at. My army will do what an army does best, defend territory from invaders and maintain order. The same equipment failure that prevents me from remotely operating this facility seems to have activated its security robots and turrets. There's a security room near the base of the stairs. Perhaps you can deactivate them yourself. Good. I won't hold you up any longer. Commence the call for use of dead robots. Your safety. Please take cover. 
here is done. Return to the Lucky 38 so we can discuss next steps. You have a very bright future ahead of you. Thanks to your actions today, so does the rest of mankind. Enjoy all the Vegas Strip has to offer. I take it you've come to deliver the Platinum Chip? Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so... capacious. So very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little... relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnyvale. Back then, anyway. That's where the chip was printed. On October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. Yes, so far as you've seen, all it does is change the picture on the Securitron's face screens from policemen to soldiers. But as you'll see, some things are more easily shown than told. Take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level, and you'll see what I mean. Don't worry, you'll like what you see. We have much to accomplish, you and I. Step closer to the demonstration area, if you would. I expect you're well familiar with my Securitrons by now. The titanium alloy housing that protects its electronic core deflects small arms and traffic easily enough. Its X-25 Gatling laser produced to spec by Glasinghouse Inc. is deadly against soft targets at medium range. And for close range suppression or crowd control, the Securitron is armed with a 9mm submachine gun. All of this you probably already knew. What you did not know that these are the Securitron's secondary weapons. All this time, my Securitrons have had to get by running the Mark I operating system, which lacked software drivers for their primary weapons. Today, with the delivery of the Platinum Chip, all that changes. Behold, for the first time, Securitrons running the Mark II OS. The M235 missile launcher gives the Securitron the ability to engage at significantly longer ranges. And a rapid-fire G-28 grenade launcher ensures the Securitron is deadly in close-range engagements. The software upgrade also includes drivers for the Securitron's highly sophisticated onboard auto repair systems. Altogether, the Mark II software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. The city of New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. Return to the penthouse now. We have much to discuss. Trips to the basement are rarely so educational, don't you think? I've since broadcast the upgrade to every Securitron in range of my transmitters, and I must say, it's causing quite a stir down on the strip. The Foundation is laid. My Securitrons on the Strip are upgraded, and those at the Fort ready for action. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the attitudes of some lesser groups, while we wait for Caesar's Legion to attack Hoover Dam. Outside New Vegas, at what was once called Nellis Air Force Base, resides an unusual tribe known as the Boomers. They are, shall we say, aggressively reclusive. They have several howitzers they fire at anyone who dares approach the base. Artillery of this sort has a range of several miles. If it's going to fire on Hoover Dam, I want it firing at my targets. If not, then I want to make sure that the Boomers don't sign similar treaties to fire their guns in support of the NCR or Caesar's Legion. What did you want to discuss?
General Oliver's strategy, or tunnel vision, as I like to call it, has been to mass troops at Hoover Dam. He wants to outfight the Legion in a straightforward slugging match, and then, when they rout, pursue and destroy them in detail. A crushing, decisive victory of this sort would overshadow the tactical ingenuity of Chief Hanlon's defense four years ago, you see. A good deal should be obvious to you by now. I won't spoil the rest by talking out of turn. What else did you want to discuss? I've resurrected Vegas, spirit intact. What I need now is the ability to enforce my rightful claim. Not just against Caesar's Legion, by the way. In fact, the NCR is a more present and insidious threat. To enforce, one must have force, a position of strength. Years ago, when I detected NCR scouts roaming the Mojave, I could tell from their uniforms that these were no mere tribesmen. I knew it was only a matter of time before an army appeared to take control of the dam, and I knew my Securitrons wouldn't be enough to oppose them. And so I recruited the three families. Vegas belongs to me because I mustered enough strength to bring the NCR to the bargaining table. Indeed it was, and still is, but not without taking significant casualties. Would Kimball and Oliver have traded the lives of hundreds of soldiers for absolute control of Hoover Dam? Oh, yes. They weren't afraid of me. They were afraid of Caesar, that attacking me would leave them vulnerable to a Legion offensive. And so they negotiated, not out of the kindness of their hearts, as they try to make it seem, because the calculus of power left no other choice. NCR forces were permitted to occupy Hoover Dam and establish a military base at McCarran Airport. Well, it used to be one. They recognized my sovereignty over the Vegas Strip and agreed to supply electricity and water once their engineers repaired the dam. Written into the treaty were provisions that the NCR do nothing to prevent its soldiers and civilians from visiting the Strip. That's how I harness the NCR to my endeavor. Their occupation has been the engine of my growing economy. The salient issue is that they will go to war with me if given the chance. There's just one reason why the NCR hasn't contrived some outrage to justify invading the Strip. Caesar's Legion. The final battle between those two armies is fast approaching. I can't afford to let either side win on their terms. What else did you want to discuss? New Vegas is more than a city. It's the remedy to mankind's derailment. The city's economy is a blast furnace in which can be forged the steel of a new rail line running straight to a new horizon. What is the NCR? A society of people desperate to experience comfort, ease, luxury. A society of customers. With all that money pouring in? Give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. I prefer the term autocrat. I would rule as a chief executive. I would not answer to a board of directors or any other entity. Nothing to impede progress. If you want to see the fate of democracies, Look out the windows. My judgment. I have no interest in abusing others, just as I have no interest in legislating or otherwise dictating what people do in their private time. Nor have I any interest in being worshipped as some kind of machine god messiah. I am impervious to such corrupting ambitions. 
but autocracy, firm control in the hands of a technological and economic visionary? Yes, that Vegas shall have. What else did you want to discuss? One of the followers of the apocalypse, I'm sure. They're curious about me. Good luck planting a surveillance device here in the Lucky 38 without my knowing about it. What else did you want to discuss? It was a place of splendor. As magnificent as today's strip may seem, it's but a shadow of the neon paradise that was Las Vegas. I grew up not far from here, and though I traveled the old world extensively, I never found another place like it. By 2065, I deemed it a mathematical certainty that an atomic war would devastate the Earth within 15 years. Every projection I ran confirmed it. I knew I couldn't save the world, nor did I care to, but I could save Vegas, and in the process, perhaps save mankind. I set to work immediately. I thought I had plenty of time to prepare. As it turned out, I was 20 hours short. On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted Las Vegas and its surrounding areas. My networked mainframes were able to predict and force transmit disarm code subsets to 59 warheads, neutralizing them before impact. Laser cannons mounted on the roof of the Lucky 38 destroyed another nine warheads. The rest got through, though none hit the city itself. A suboptimal performance, admittedly. If only the Platinum Chip had arrived a day sooner. The Platinum Chip was printed in Sunnyvale, California on October 22nd, 2077, the day before the Great War. It was to have been delivered by courier the following afternoon, but by then, the world had ended. The chip contained vital software upgrades, but not just for my Securitrons. Every aspect of the missile defense grid would have been upgraded too. Given that I had to make do with buggy software, the outcome could have been worse. I nearly died as it was. Software glitches set off a cascade of system crashes. I had to take the Lucky 38's reactor offline, lest it melt down. For nearly five years, I battled power outages and more system crashes until I finally managed to reboot my data core with an older version of the OS. I spent the next few decades in a veritable coma, but I survived, obviously, and eventually thrived. As I was saying, I need you to enlist or neutralize the boomers at Nellis Air Force Base. Use extreme caution when approaching the base. Their firepower is considerable. Recently, one of my roaming Securitrons observed a man near the base studying the pattern of its artillery fire. Maybe he's learned something. Whoa there, pal. You better slow down, or you'll get blown up like the rest of the idiots who thought they'd scavenge in Boomer territory. Now that I've got your attention, might you be interested in a little information? It'll cost you, but it's well worth the investment. Whoa, simmer down. I'll tell you, I'm a gambler and a scavenger. I've made some cash from gambling and some cash from... Reclaiming goods that are no longer being used. Now, do you want my help or not? Oh, lordy, lordy. You haven't heard of the boomers? What rock have you been living under? They're a bunch of artillery slinging, grenade lobbing odd jobs camping out in Nellis. Wander into their territory, and you're as good as mincemeat. There is a way, and I'll tell you. For a little wager. Well, I know the secret to get past. If you give me the caps, I'll tell you. If you make it back alive, I'll double your money.
Okay, here you go. That page has the details, but it's all in the timing as you move from building to building. I'll be here watching, so I'll know if you've made it to the gate or not. Remember, there's 600 caps in it if you make it. Hold it right there. Don't you move. How the hell did you survive that bombardment? But I had you zeroed in the whole time. Nobody's that fast. Move a muscle now and I'll blow you to pieces. Then just... just stay where you are. Raquel will be here any second. I'll take this from here. I'm Raquel, Master at Arms for the Nellis Homeland. Mother Pearl, our eldest, wishes to speak to you. As I said, she is our eldest. Mother Pearl has lived at Nellis from the start and has the wisdom of her age. She said that this day would come and that any savage to reach our gate should be brought to her. Follow close and mind your behavior. Welcome, child. Took your sweet time getting here, didn't you? I've been waiting a good five years for an outsider to come along and visit. Prophecy. Do we look like a bunch of religious idiots? I just hoped a savage, oh, outsider, sorry, would make it to our gates before one of those armies out there comes knocking. That's right, child. Mother Pearl knows a storm is gathering. Times are changing. Maybe time for us to change a little, too. Oh, so many ways. Small ones to begin with, so we can get used to what it's like to have a sev uh, outsider around and about. Should that go well, it may be you can help in big ways, too. We'll have to see. You have to keep in mind that you're our first contact with the outside world since I was barely a woman. Seclusion has kept us safe, but the world around us is changing. Neon lights in the distance, patrolling robots, soldiers. My youngers think our guns can keep out the world, but I think we need to let it in just a little or become its victim. You're that little bit of the world, child. Welcome to Nellis. You picked a good time to stop by, for we're swimming in problems. My youngers can tell you all about it. Raquel could use help with the bug problem. Doc Argyle has wounded he's tending to. And Loyal and Jack might be looking for help with some repairs. Or you could just go see Pete at the museum and hear the story of our people. All you have to do there is listen. Come and go as you like, help or don't help, I leave it up to you. But I hope you'll show my youngers that not every outsider needs to be blown up.
I hope Pearl knows what she's doing, letting you wander around Nellis as you please. If that's so, how about you look into repairing the solar arrays on the roof of the generator building? Nothing too complicated about it, but it's a long ways to walk my old bones, and there's been that ant problem over near there. You can't miss the array. It's on top of the generator building smack dab in the middle of Nellis between the two runways. Ha! Huh. If we had spare parts, do you think I'd be asking you to fix the damn things? That's rich. No, we ran out of spares a while back, and Jack and I have been doing our best to patch the arrays up as best we can. Sadly, we're at our wit's end. There have to be spare parts somewhere around the wasteland, but I just don't know where to direct you. You may have noticed we don't get out much. Be sure to stop on back and let me know when the arrays are fixed. Hello, outsider. Need something? An impressive piece of work. I'll keep that in mind if jobs come up in the future. No, those aren't for outsiders to use. Leave them alone. Well, if you genuinely care so much, they're flight simulators. If you don't know our history yet, you should see Pete and get the tour. We dream to one day rule the skies. Don't get blown up. So you're the outsider. Lived your whole life out there, huh? Wow. I always thought you savages probably spoke a different language. But I hear you sound like us. Me? I work with Loyal. Mostly electronics work in robotics. Keeping the old technologies alive, right? Loyal's a great man, but he's getting on in years. So a younger's gotta learn everything he knows. That'd be me. The man knows how to fix and build just about everything that was ever made. It's not easy keeping up with him. If you help him recover the lady, I figure... Oh, I figure it's been a nice day. Yeah, a real nice day. Did I say that? Sometimes I just say stupid things. Sorry about that. Pearl will tell you when the time comes. If... I mean... I should really be going. Hey there. Back for more? What I could use is some scrap metal. It may not sound exciting, but around here we have to recycle every rivet and plate. The other thing, you being from the outside and all, well... I guess you'd call it a personal matter, but... Well... Ah, uh, forget it. You think I'm handsome? Wow. I wonder if she does too. There's an outpost near here. The signs say, Crimson Caravan? It seems like they carry things to and fro for people out there. Well, every once in a while, I watch the outpost through one of the spotter's binoculars. And sometimes there's this girl there. This special girl. And sometimes it's like she's watching me back with her binoculars. Except, she's probably just watching Nellis. I haven't tried waving. Oh, you can't miss her. She has short red hair and she's the most beautiful woman who ever lived. You'd really talk to her for me? What if she feels the same way? What if she comes here like you did? What if she gets blown up? What if she doesn't like me? Oh, jeez. Uh, I better just let you handle it. I'm better with machines. They don't make my stomach queasy like this. That would be amazing. As in, I would thank you forever. I heard the Legion's planning to unleash their best men against us.
You should go talk to Blake or Alice. They handle most of our contact with visitors. I watch all sorts of things with my binoculars. Who wants to know? And why? Nice looking blonde boy? I always wondered if he was watching me back. What's he like? Oh, I've just gotta meet him. Is there any way the boomers would let me visit Nellis? This is so exciting. Let me know how it turns out. How is your visit with us going, stranger? Well, well, this is welcome news. Who is she? She's with those traitors? They've tried to contact us before, but I'm not interested in trading with greedy savages. This presents a bit of a problem. Jack isn't allowed to leave Nellis, and I doubt she would make it through the artillery alive. Hmm. I suppose Jack deserves a chance at love. You can tell Jack she has a free pass to enter, but he is responsible for her actions. Do not make me regret this decision, outsider. See ya. Have you seen her? The redhead of my dreams? She does? You mean it? That's incredible. What happens next? Can she come here? How do we make sure she doesn't get blown up? Should I talk to the Gunners, or to Pearl? Here, take this Boomer outfit. I'll let the Gunners know she's coming, and not to shoot at her. Hello again. How's your Boomer friend? Okay, talk to you soon. Hello again. How's your boomer friend? I was hoping you would. What's going on? Have they agreed to my safety yet? There's one more thing. I have a work contract with the Crimson Caravan, and if I walk away, I lose the wages they owe me. Could you do just one more thing for me and talk to Alice McLafferty about it? I know if I do it, she'll just say no. I'd hate to lose the money. Welcome to the Crimson Caravan Company, New Vegas Branch. What may I do for you? Ah, yes. Her infatuation with a boomer she's never met. It's a small camp. More gets around. She's aware she's breaking her contract, which is undoubtedly why she sent you to talk to me instead of coming herself. Janet is free to leave, but she forfeits the wages she's owed. That's the price of contract breaking. Take it or leave it. Being sentimental is not how I made the Crimson Caravan so successful. But I'll allow it, just this once. Janet will be paid what she's owed. Consider it a gift. I've heard the Legion's planning to unleash... Have you spoken with McLafferty yet? That's great! I can't believe you went through all this trouble for me. Thank you. Thank you for getting Janet to Nellis. I've never been so happy in my entire life. Cool. How much can you spare? Thanks. Thanks for dropping it off. Anything else? Like I said, I can never get enough scrap metal. Okay. See ya. 
Thank you for getting me here. Jack is a great guy. Pearl sent word saying it's all right to tell you about the lady in the water. Ain't nothing creepy about it. It's a term of respect. A long time ago, long before the war that killed just about everything that ever lived, a bomber crashed not far from here. A bomber was a flying contraption that could drop explosives down on anything it flew over. But anyway, moving on. This bomber crashed down in Lake Mead, pretty damn near intact. When we got to Nellis, see, I found this article in a magazine all about it. There was another B-29 around here, part of a museum. Couldn't fly, but had a lot of spare parts, see? Get where I'm going? Since I was a young man, I've dreamed of raising that lady from the lake and bringing her back to life. What do you say? Simple. Attach deployable ballast to the plane and float it on up. Here is a remote detonator. Once the ballast is attached to the plane, just hit the detonator from the shore and let buoyancy handle the rest. Maybe you don't understand. Hasn't been one of us, not a one, to set a foot outside Nellis in over 50 years. You come along with your knowledge of the outside, and it seems the time's come to raise the lady after all. Good. Here's the deployable ballast. Go find the plane, attach the ballast, and hit the button. Might try holding your breath. If that doesn't sound good enough, talk to Jack. He was working on a rebreather once. I've never been so happy in my entire life. I just need some parts from a pressure cooker to create a hermetic seal for the rebreather. That's a brilliant idea. I can put that together right now. Here you go. A new rebreather. Don't get blown up. Things are getting stranger every day.
It's going to be a dream come true once you've raised that bomber from Lake Mead. That's tremendous. I'll transmit instructions to the robots to start packing up the plane to bring it back to Nellis. I just told you, the robots are going to handle it. They'll break the plane down into pieces and move it up from Colville Bay in one shot. Exactly. We'll be shelling an unoccupied location in outer Vegas to get their attention elsewhere. By the time they realize they aren't under attack, the plane and the bots will be long gone. The kids wish we were shelling a real target, but Pearl thinks it's wise not to start up a war just as the lady has risen. Hey, I'd better get rolling. Jack and I have a lot of work ahead of us. Hello, friend. How can Mother Pearl be of help today? What you have done for us is a miracle, child. You have fulfilled the only dreams we ever had outside our walls. You are a trusted friend of us all. If there is ever a way for us to help you, child, tell me, and I will make it so. Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to battle. We'll be there when you need us. Bye. Enjoy your time on the Vegas Strip. Any progress with the Boomers? Well done. The Boomers' firepower may prove an advantage when the battle for Hoover Dam comes around. Your next assignment won't take you far. It concerns the Omertas and their den of vice, Gamora. As the decisive encounter between the Bull and the Bear looms close, my concerns about the Omertas have grown. I've never expected loyalty, mind you. A reliably underhanded tribe is just as constant to deal with as one that always runs true. But that's just it. Lately, the Omerta's cooperative silence has been deafening. Not a single complaint. They're up to something. The Omertas are fanatically loyal to each other. Still, among any group, one can find the occasional degenerate. Gomorrah's receptionist happens to be one. For years, she passed on whispers of what was taking place at the casino in exchange for payment. A few months ago, she clammed up. Odds are she's scared. But I've had no way of approaching her. Start with her. Hey, no one but Omeritas are allowed to carry guns into Gamora. Check your weapons with me. You'll get these back on your way out. Hello, and welcome to Gamora. What can I help you with today? Feel free to head to our club, Brimstone, or you can see our gorgeous courtyard out behind the casino. I knew someone would call in that mark soon. What do you want to know? All I can tell you is to find Kachino. He's the lowest level lieutenant you're going to be able to talk to. Some of the girls say he's been involved in some shady business the family wouldn't really like. Ask him about it. I sure do, but loose lips <laughs> sink ships.
All right. You look pretty trustworthy. Not much of a rumor, but I hear the Tops is always looking for new talent. Lord knows they've needed it for a long time. Later. I hear you've been asking questions about me, dickweed. What the fuck do you want? Business? What the fuck do you mean, business? You looking to get yourself burned? Now you start talking real clear, and I mean fucking crystal clear, because I'm about to lose my patience. I don't give half a dick what you heard. Now get the fuck out of my face before I burn your sorry ass. Well, what do we have here, huh? Let me guess. You've heard about the mistress who makes all your fantasies come true. So you followed the call of your desires, all the way to the arms of Joanna. Moi. Now that you've found me, I wonder, do you have what it takes? Oh, confident. I like that. So, what do you want to do with what you've got? Oh my, aren't you something else? I guess you'll have to see for yourself what I can do, huh? Consider it on the house, honey. All right, honey. What do you want to know? Yes. It's your paradise on this desolate earth, hun. Your troubles are gone. Your pain forgotten, and your dreams come true. Everyone wants a piece of their own personal heaven, so they come here for hours and hours, hun. <laughs> Military men, NCR ranchers, wandering travelers. They're all the same without their clothes on. What they want, the Omertas provide. You best hold your tongue, friend. Or someone here will take care of it for good. All right, honey. What do you want to know? Yes. Oh, nothing special, hun. I'm the best lay in Gamora, and that's all you need to know. I like that you're here. Doesn't that make you happy? I... look. We can't talk here. If you think you can help me, follow me to my room, please. Follow me, hun. Okay. We can talk here. I'm... I don't know what's happening to me. I can't feel a goddamn thing anymore. Empty and poisoned like the wasteland. I'm afraid I won't make it out of here. Not without Carlitos. If the Medex doesn't kill me first, Kachino or another Omerta will. <sighs> I look pathetic, huh? The great Joanna. And now... I don't even know why I'm telling you this. He's a filthy monster. 
I've been with perverted men, but Kachino's done things to me that even other Omertas would also want to kill him if they knew what he does. He's broken so many of their rules that I don't know how he still breeds. They run the place as a center for all their dirty scams and extortions. Gambling, sex, drugs. They'll use whatever works to exploit your weaknesses. Hooker, customer, it doesn't matter. Everyone here is a pawn to the Omertas, playing and dying by their rules. Nero's the pack leader, and Big Saul's his right hand. What Nero wants, Big Saul does. Then there's... Kachino. He's a filthy monster. I've been with perverted men, but Kachino's done things to me that... Even other Omertas would also want to kill him if they knew what he does. He's broken so many of their rules that I don't know how he still breathes. He was an Omerta that fell in love with me. They don't ever mix with people outside the family, you know? He was planning to escape with me, but Kachino found out about us. So he did something, talked, I don't know. And Carlitos disappeared. Kachino doesn't give a shit about rules, only cares to feed his perversions. He lusted for me. He's done things to me. Look, I'm stuck here. I know that. Carlitos is the only thing that kept me going. And now I don't have anything left. If he's alive, he's long gone. The Omertas want him dead now. If you meet him anywhere, I'd do anything to get him back and escape this hell. Although I'm not keeping my hopes up. Hun, nobody's given me a free thing before. What's it going to be for you? Caps? Sex? Straps? What? What? Are you serious? Well, I'm not complaining, hun. Thanks so much for your help. Be sure to check out the courtyard. You again? What the fuck do you want? Where the fuck did you get that? Okay, listen, buddy. That's some dangerous shit you got there. That book can get me killed if the wrong people see it. Let's talk. What do you want? What can I do for you? I can't stop you, but that's gonna mean my death. I can make it with you a while to give it to me, though. Plus, if you go to the bosses, I can't help you stop what they've been doing. I can pay you for it, of course. I also have some information about the family's business that you might find interesting. Between you and I, we can break up what they're planning, maybe save some lives. Mine included, of course. Oh, here's some caps. Now give me the journal. All right, there we go. So let me tell you what I know about the family's business. The bosses, Big Sal and Nero, have been working for a while on this. They're arming themselves like an army, using this new guy, Troik. They also brought in a specialist named Clandon. At least that's what they introduced him as. I got no fucking idea. They let him have the run of the place, though. He seems like a nice guy, but he makes me nervous. He's a little arrogant, but he's too nice. Too open. I've never seen him fucking a gambler. Everyone has a vice, but this guy seems like the Pope. Okay, toss him at me. He's a skittish little fucker. Spends half the day pumping his body full of chems and the other half pumping hookers with his willy. He has some kind of connections, so he's able to smuggle huge shipments of weapons into the strip. The bosses got him by the short hairs. We covered up a hooker he killed while flying on some psycho, so he gets us guns in exchange for not ratting. Okay, toss him at me. 
No, just that it involves guns and muscle. Also that it's big. Very big. Only Nero and Big Saul know everything, and they ain't telling. Okay, you can find me here or upstairs in my room. I'll let the muscle know you're a friend of mine. That should let you get around a little easier. Hey there. Hey, nice to meet you. Do you need help with something? Kachino. Yeah, I've heard the name. Not sure why he'd send you to me. Is he helping out with room service or something? A little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm a close friend of some of the family around here. I do some independent contracting around the casino, and they set me up at this great room. See ya. You. I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. Cacino? Cacino what? Are you kidding me? He must be trying to get me killed. What do you want to talk about? Oh, man. I don't even like to think about it. All that goddamn blood. It was just in the hotel like any other night. I took some chems with the girl I was with, but I never black out. I did this time, though. Next thing I knew, I woke up, she was lying next to me, stabbed dead. There was a knife next to the bed, and I was covered in her blood. I keep a little switchblade tucked away with me. You never know when you might find some trouble. All right, have at it. That night, mostly buff out, I like to cut it with a little bit of jet and wash it down with some whiskey. That was my standard Saturday night. What? Yeah, you're right. I wonder what was up with that. What do you want to talk? I don't see how that's your business. I'm just a guest here, having a little fun. Goodbye. You again? Make it quick. Well, that motherfucker. What the hell? Damn. Thanks for finding this. This should be plenty of proof to cover my ass if they try to rat me out to any authorities. They're keeping them in a little utility section down off the basement. I don't know what they're arming themselves for, but I know it isn't for the good of mankind. I'm pretty proud of myself. It's a stroke of genius if I could be so modest. The whole arrangement starts with an old buddy of mine in the Republic. He's responsible for packing and shipping supplies to the NCR on the Strip. He marks some containers as food and medical and packs them with guns and other shit. From there, it took just a couple of greased palms to get someone to let me cherry pick a container or two out of every shipment. Easy as pie. Okay, try and be fast about it. As a little pet project, I've been making some thermite. Thermite burns as hot as the devil's asshole and can melt through just about anything. 
I've been keeping it so if the family betrays me, I can hopefully do some damage before I end up dead or in jail. Hey, fuck you. All right, I'll place the fucking thermite myself. You get out of the casino for a bit. I'll take care of it while you're gone. Hey, what can I do for you? You better get outside for a little bit. I'm sure they're gonna look for the infamous courier when things go to hell. Hey, what can I do for you? All right, let's have him. Yeah, this is Clanion. This guy's one sick motherfucker. The way I see it, you have a few options. Maybe he could use what's on these tapes to get him by himself. Or maybe you could use them to leverage him out of the casino. Okay, toss them at me. Okay, you can find me here or upstairs in my room. I'll let the muscle know you're a friend of mine. That should let you get around a little easier. Units our way, right as we speak. <laughs> You hear there was some kind of shootout at one of them casinos on the Strip? Good to see you again. Hope you're winning some money in here. I think I should kill you before you have a chance to show those tapes to anyone. What do I have to lose? I guess you've made your choice then. Time to die. Got you now. Hey, what can I do for you? All right, let's have him. Oh, is that so? Well, I can't say that I'm sad to see that fucker gone. Now we cut off the head of the serpent. Big Saul and Nero have to die. Hurry and get ready. I'll give you a gun when you get to the room. Hey, here's that gun I promised you. I suggest using it while they are talking. Let's have I'm pretty some sure they're words. gonna kill you after Take they talk. Take a seat on the couch so we can get to talking. It's time for the meeting with the bosses. We can't chit chat right now. Take a seat on the couch. Please have a seat. Let's have a bit of a power. You and me want to have a So I assume you know why we called you here. Yeah, clan will be hard to replace, but not impossible. We'll find contractors just like them, without breaking a sweat. All right, let's dance. I'm happy. You like that? Hey, thanks for all the hard work back there. I'm gonna run a tight ship here, don't you worry. Bye.
What do you have to report about the Omertas? Well done. They won't be causing any trouble then. Your next assignment is to locate and destroy remnants of the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. The NCR nearly did the job at Helios 1 a few years ago, but there seem to have been survivors, unfortunately. Given the Brotherhood's fanatical views on technology, they can be counted on to oppose my regime. Please, put them out of my misery. We're talking about a coterie of bulging-eyed fanatics who think all pre-war technology belongs to them. They'll never accept my using an army of robots to defend New Vegas. While it's a fight I can win, I'd rather sidestep it altogether. Don't tell me you've fallen for the stories of noble paladins on crusade, preserving mankind's technology in a benighted age. Dross. In any case, this is an employer-employee relationship. I've given you an assignment, and the directions are clear. Since 2278, I've lost five roaming Securitrons near Hidden Valley. I didn't receive any clear video of the incidents, but telemetry from the units destroyed indicates they were attacked with energy weapons. It's obvious that the Brotherhood has a base in Hidden Valley or thereabouts. Finding it won't be easy, but getting inside will be the real trick. From time to time, the NCR has assaulted Brotherhood bunkers. In four of the six incidents I know of, the bunkers self-destructed. I surmise it's standard practice for the Brotherhood to install a self-destruct system. It's consistent with their uncompromising nature. You might use that against them, or kill them another way, it's up to you. Return when it's done. Listen very closely and do as I say. Your life depends on it. Hand over everything you're carrying. Weapons, ammo, clothes, armor, everything. I want you stripped down to your underwear. I've told you what to do. Strip off your clothes and equipment or face summary execution. Will you comply? Take it all off and hand it to me. Then come inside and through the door at the rear of the chamber. Paladin Ramos is waiting for you. How the hell did you get in here? Normally I would have already shot you, but I'm under orders to bring you to the Elder. Will you come peacefully? Okay. I'll take you to him. Follow me closely, or you'll be shot. If you have something to say, say it to Elder McNamara. How did you find us, stranger? And do tell the truth. You took an extreme risk in coming here. My policy towards trespassers has not been lenient. The security of this bunker is my foremost concern, and I take pains to minimize our exposure topside. For this reason, I might be interested in contracting with an outsider who can accomplish certain tasks, some basic, some a bit more involved. An NCR ranger has begun to set up post in one of the other bunkers up top, for example. I want him driven off. Understood.
Yes, we could kill him easily enough. But sometimes you can learn a great deal by observing people, both enemies and friends. Which is why it will be very interesting to observe how you choose to deal with the situation and decide which you are, enemy or friend. Do we understand one another? Very well. I'll be interested to see how thoroughly and efficiently you carry out your mission. Paladin Ramos will escort you back to the bunker's entrance and set you loose. Notice that I said loose, not free. You are not free to carry the secret of this bunker's location beyond Hidden Valley, until I'm convinced that you're capable and dependable. To underscore this point, you'll be fitted with an explosive collar. Wander off and it will detonate. Focus on your mission, and you'll be fine. You'll find your equipment in the chest to your right. Don't bother coming back until you've dealt with the Ranger. Thought you'd sneak up on me, you filthy powder ganger? Huh. <laughs> Got some stones on you, son. I like that. What can I do for you? Well? I thought I might set up a safe house in one of the bunkers here. Between the remote location and the dust storms, I figured it was ideal. Of course, seems a lot less remote since you showed up. Plus, I haven't been able to get my radio working, and a safe house is no good without one. I reckon I'll stick around a while, patrol for troublemakers, see if I can get that radio working. Oh, and in your expert opinion, why would that be? You've seen that with your own two eyes? God damn. I knew Cook's gang passed through these parts about that frequently, but I didn't know they hold up here. Be a rude awakening to find 15 of those merciless bastards looking down at me snoozing on my bedroll. Yep, I'd be better off setting up an ambush along one of their routes to catch stragglers. Thanks for the information. You may have saved my life. Stand back from the door. The Elder's eager to hear your report. How did you resolve the situation with the Ranger? Gone. Why did he leave? And what makes you think he won't be back? Yes, you exploited his fear of powder gangers very effectively. The collar includes a microphone, you see. Part of the test. He'll keep his distance, setting ambushes, never suspecting that these bunkers house something far more dangerous to him than criminals. Well played. Since you completed your assigned task, I will allow you to come and go from the bunker freely. So let's get that collar off you. There, that's better, I hope. Now that we have that bit of unpleasantness out of the way, there is a matter that I would like to discuss with you. Stop by the command room when you can. Oh, and bear in mind, if you end up betraying us, we will know it, and there will be no mercy.
Have you destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel? Single-handedly destroying a Brotherhood of Steel bunker is quite an accomplishment. Platoons of NCR troops have died trying to do the same. This welcome news comes just in time, as events in the wider world are coming to a head. Aaron Kimball, the president of the new California Republic, is going to visit Hoover Dam to boost morale. Apparently, he hasn't considered the effect on the troops' morale of seeing their beloved leader get his brains blown out by a Legion sniper. I need you to make sure that no harm comes to President Kimball. It's fortunate that you've maintained good relations with the NCR. Simple. An NCR ranger named Graham is in charge of security arrangements for the visit. Present yourself to him. Let him know you want to help. Given your reputation, it's a near certainty that he'll accept your offer. Don't dally. The precise time of Kimball's visit is a closely guarded secret, but it will happen soon. I've heard of you. I'm glad you're here to help us out. This is a delicate matter, and we need all the help we can get from people we can trust. We've got a lot to do to prepare for the President's visit, and not much time. Once we start, we'll be on a strict timetable. Are you ready? Ask your questions, but keep it short. We trust you, so you're free to have your weapons. Just don't do anything too crazy, and we'll back you up. Security detail consists of rangers stationed here at the dam. Some will keep an eye on the crowd while others will watch the perimeter. Snipers and sharpshooters have been assigned to key locations, and we also have a special canine unit sniffing out members of the crowd. I've also locked down access to critical locations such as the landing platform on the visitor center. All right, I'll give you full access. I have a full itinerary here. Here you go. The Legion will definitely try something. We don't have any solid leads yet. I'd almost expect something direct from them. But given the circumstances, there's a possibility of something more subtle, like sabotage. But since we don't have anything solid, we'll just have to keep our eyes out for anything out of the ordinary. Someone like you. I'm just glad to have you on board. Do whatever you can. Security sweeps, talk to people, keep an eye out. If there's nothing else, then let's get moving. Make it quick. Good. The president doesn't arrive until tomorrow. Let's get some rest, and we'll have a brief talk first thing in the morning. Glad you could join us. Most of my men are already on duty, and the crowd has already started gathering outside. We've got a busy day ahead of us. The plan is to get through today without the shit hitting the fan. So I'll be overseeing the security team personally, and keeping in constant contact with people over the radio. It's a good bet that the Legion is gonna try something today, so we have to be prepared for anything. We'll do whatever it takes to get the President through this visit in one piece. President Kimball is arriving shortly. If you want to do any last-minute security sweeps or take a look around for anything suspicious, do it now. Once you're ready, meet me outside on the observation deck. But don't take too long. Hey, you haven't seen my friend around here, have you? His name is Ben, and he's an engineer. We were supposed to meet up so we can watch the president's speech together, but he hasn't shown up yet. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just keep waiting. Sorry to bother you. Have you finished your security sweep? Looks like that's his vertebrate coming right now. It's showtime. Let's not mess this up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some security procedures to oversee.
mind. Come back in a minute. I'm busy with security matters. Nothing is going to happen to the president on the watch. Thank you, my fellow Californians, who have come so far to answer the call the service put forth by the Republic. It is for you that I have come here, and it is because of you that I am able to do so. We enjoy our privileges because you take the greatest of risks and are prepared to make the most noble sacrifices. It is because of men and women like Private First Class, Jeremy Watson, that Nevada and the new California Republic remain free and secure. Born in a tin shack on the outskirts of one pine, Jeremy Watson never had any easy. His father was a caravan guard. What are you doing up here? And his mother, like many Californians, braved the ruins of the old world as a prospector. Settle down. No one uses the radio until I know what's going on. Oh, shit. Really? We should go take a look. Uh, I think I should check it out first before radioing it in. Fuck it. You are more trouble than you're worth. They suffer for one of your Razor attacks. Oh. But the time came when they could go on the shoulder of the bird alone. Damn it. I can't believe the Legion actually got someone past our security. Good job catching them. I'll have a security team sweep the area to see if the Legion has any more surprises for us. I'm also canceling the president's speech. We'll have a security team get him out of here right away. But let's not relax until he's safe. Twelve years ago, they called out for help. And the Republic heard them. Troopers, Rangers, just like you, answered the clarion call. Men and women stepped forward to say, I will carry the weight. And at Owens Lake, we made true on our promise. Driving, driving out, out the raider tribes to establish a lasting peace in the eastern Sierra Nevada. Bring the weight. And though we left behind many of our brothers and sisters on that battlefield, it did not break us.
job today. We got the president out safe and sound. And I couldn't have done it without you. You have my thanks. Be advised. The Lucky 38 is not open to the general public. Trespassers will be shot. If not for you, President Kimball would be dead. So you needn't feel guilty when the NCR's route from Hoover Dam demolishes his political career. The Legion has nothing left to wait for. Their assault on the dam could begin at any moment. Before that happens, I'll ask you to complete one other task. It may seem trivial, but that's far from the case. Between the Strip and Helios 1 lies the El Dorado electrical substation. Humble as it appears, the substation has immense strategic value, for it's there that you'll jumpstart the Lucky 38's dormant reactor. Gain access to the substation's control room and install this override module. Just so you know, there are NCR troops guarding the station. The strain of defending Las Vegas from annihilation exceeded my power system's capacity. My primary reactor shut down. For years, I played a miser with my emergency power supply. I began to run out of reserves around the time I woke the first batch of Securitrons. Negotiating an allotment of power from Hoover Dam was crucial. That's what's powered the Strip for the past seven years. I needed the operating software on the Platinum chip to bring it back online. And to start the reactor itself requires a tremendous jolt of current. Very attention-getting. The NCR has its hands full now, of course. I doubt they'll raise much of a fuss. This is not a good time to be dependent on energy from Hoover Dam. When the Legion attacks, the NCR may cut power altogether. And I'll be needing a good deal more power than the NCR has allotted to the Strip. Broadcasting encrypted VMQ boosted command signals to hundreds of Securitrons eats up more power than you might expect. With this accomplished, all preparations will have been made. The battle for Hoover Dam will be upon us before long. As you can see, Vegas is humming along. I've tested my C3I broadcasting arrays. Everything is in order. And just in time, as it turns out, the forces of Caesar's Legion are on the march, establishing a staging area east of the dam. Their assault could begin at any moment, so that's where you'll be heading if you're ready. Hoover Dam. Precisely. You'll have no trouble joining the battle on their side, and they'll be too distracted to notice why you're really there. Your objective is to reach a control room halfway across the dam and install an override module similar to the one you used at the substation. The override will enable me to control the entire dam's power output. You may remember how the bunker at the fort was rather dimly lit. Well, just like the Lucky 38, it needs a big jolt of electricity to power up. You've already uploaded the new operating system to the Securitrons. All they need is power, and they'll be in fighting trim. Even now, on the brink of battle... I care because he is a known quantity. Not the man so much as the political context he inhabits. Kimball rose to prominence as the hero of the Mojave when he led a campaign of reprisals against tribals who dared to attack NCR citizens. Ordering the occupation of Hoover Dam was his first act of office. As water and electricity flowed to NCR cities, his popularity soared. Conversely, his failure to annex the Mojave these seven years and the immense costs of occupying a foreign land 
have eroded his popular support. What else did you want to discuss? Imagine two snarling dogs fighting over a curve of bone. Perhaps the rib of their master long dead. It'll be a pitched battle, that's a certainty. Perhaps the greatest battle the Earth has seen since the human race nearly made itself extinct. The Legion will mount a ferocious and determined frontal assault from the east, that much is certain. Still, Caesar is a capable strategist. I'd be surprised if he hasn't found some way to infiltrate the dam or the NCR's rear areas. As I've said, your objective is to install an override module in the control room halfway across the dam. Are you ready to perform this task? We've accomplished a great deal, you and I. One last task and our work is complete. I'll see you in the control room. We must get to the control room and install the override chip. shouldn't be here. It's best if you just move along. Damn it all the hell! Let's go! No one is allowed into the control room. I knew you'd make it. Resourceful as always. The override module is functioning properly. I'm rerouting power to the Securitron vault at the fort as we speak. I just need you to head over to the east power plant and manually activate the switch. When you return topside, I think you'll see that my Securitron army is a little more than the Legion was prepared to handle. Oh, and before you go, grab that printout spooling from the console here. Those papers set the terms for the NCR's unconditional surrender. I thought you might enjoy the honor of presenting them to the NCR's commanding officer once the Legion has been defeated. Cheers.
And who are you to come before me? You don't bear the mark of the bear, yet you are ready for battle. Many graves in the East are filled with those who said as much, with braver words, not backed by strength. It is Kaiser's will this gate to the West bear the flag of the Legion. Kaiser's will shall be done. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. So you seek quarter? Terms of surrender? Our roads into NCR are hung with the bodies of those who attempted to negotiate with us. Save your speeches. We will take Hoover Dam and move forward until our feet crush the setting sun beneath them. Hoover Dam has never seen the mass strength of the East. Only legates such as Graham, who deserved the fire Kaiser blessed him with. Now I am here, and make markers of your people as the Legion carves its way west. You speak in circles. What of the East? I am the East, and I will prove it this day. For the Legion. Caesar on the cross. Been a long time since I've seen the kind of work you've laid down today. A damn long time. And the screams of those Legion bastards as they kick dirt running east like a choir of angels to my ears. Speaking of, that crazy light show over the fort? What the fuck was that? Some kind of thumb of God you called down? Amazing. Fucking amazing. Could use a hundred of you. Just scatter you over the east like jacks. Give those plum fucks the what for. Vegas? What, the families? Or house? You're talking about house. What is this Brahmin shit? I'm not getting the feeling we're all about to sing Kumbaya here. What the hell are you talking about? 
What is this? The free economic zone of New Vegas. What the hell does that mean? Oh, wait. Here we go. Demands NCR's immediate withdrawal. Withdrawal? Like fucking hell we're withdrawing. We just held the dam. We didn't do it to let it go. This paper of yours isn't fit to wipe my ass. If you think after all that's happened, I'm going to grab my ankles and take it like the Legion. You know I won't surrender the dam, and certainly not to the Ghost Man of Vegas and his new Right Hand of the Week. We held this place for years. Kicked one-legged out of here so hard Caesar burned him to a crisp. It's our post. We fought for it. I'll fight for it again today. If you're looking to convince me otherwise, you better have a lot more reasons than you just telling me to go. True. Guess I'm a little too used to seeing Securitrons in Vegas to think they'd turn and be bad news. And I know how bad they can get. <laughs> Look, house, Vegas, it's pretty. Got you blinded a bit, maybe. But NCR's got perks, too. Think about it before you sign on with him. And if you say no, keep in mind what that means. NCR may have its problems, but when we're riled, watch out. I'm not going to throw away the lives of my men just to make a point. And there'll be other days. You know, I've had thousands of employees in my time. Few met my expectations. Fewer still surpassed them. Your performance has been nothing short of spectacular. If I have need for a specialist of your stripe again, I'll know just where to turn. Back to Vegas, shall we? I really should do something about that monorail, with all the new resources at hand. I can make sure it not only runs, but runs on time. Always bothered me, the imprecision. No need to worry about the General, by the way. He'll be held responsible, publicly disgraced. 36.5% probability of suicide, by my estimate. Kimball won't be able to save him. He'll be too busy getting thrown out of office. But. Less than a 3% chance of suicide, mind you. Vegas might see a dip in revenue for a few months, half a year. But soon enough, the tourists and their money will be pouring in. Vegas will be a shining jewel in the middle of the desert. An oasis of light. A beacon to show mankind the way to the stars. This is just the start, you see. This is where it all begins. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. Mr. House's Securitron army took control of Hoover Dam and the Strip, pushing both the Legion and the exhausted NCR out of New Vegas. Mr. House continued to run New Vegas his way, a despotic vision of pre-war glory. The streets were orderly, efficient, cold. New Vegas continued to be the sole place in the wasteland where fortunes were won and lost in the blink of an eye. The courier, who had a mixed history in the wasteland, kept the status quo at Hoover Dam. Mr. House would keep New Vegas stable, if not free, for generations. Mr. House afforded the courier every luxury at his disposal in the Lucky 38. Mr. House showed little interest on the boomers, who eventually began venturing out to Nellis to meet and trade with travelers. Buried beneath tons of rubble, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley bunker when it was destroyed settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. The Fiend staged an attack against Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. During the NCR's retreat, the Fiends overwhelmed many of the troopers before Mr. House's Securitrons could deal with them. After Mr. House gained control of New Vegas, 
he sent a Securitron to Good Springs as a token of appreciation for helping the courier. Victor was a mixed blessing, however, as he continually monitored the town for Mr. House. Flush with his victory, Mr. House sent Securitrons into Freeside, thinking to increase his control over the area. When fighting broke out, the Kings fought valiantly, but were no match for the armored killing machines, and were wiped out to the last man. Though Novak was a low-priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 powder gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. Prim Slim proves to be an able-minded, if not able-bodied, sheriff for Prim. And due to his slow speed, some crooks get away without a scratch. But Prim continues to prosper under his watchful robotic eye. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. <laughs> <laughs>